Welcome back. I am glad you're here because we're diving right back into my conversation with Carrie Green, Rachel Peterson, and Adrian Dorison. And in this episode, we're going to be talking all about what to do when you're struggling with the challenge of visibility. When it feels too hard, you want to give up, it's just not moving the way that you thought. And these three women had really powerful perspectives that I could not wait to share with you. So let's dive right in. And the next thing I'd love to dive into is talking a little bit about visibility. I was just on a call with a student yesterday and she was learning the tech aspects of building out her funnel and content mapping and coming out of that weekend together. She felt so overwhelmed and like, she didn't like, why not just give up? Why not? I can't do this. It's too hard. I don't have a team yet. There's too many technical moving pieces. I should just give up and keep doing what I'm doing. So I would love to hear based on all of your experiences. We've all had those horrible moments. We've all had those moments because we don't have a team and we're doing things ourselves. What would you say to her? And what would you say to the old you to help you get past that block a little bit faster? It's a big cue. I used to have like this quote on my wall that said, successful people hang on when everyone else is let go. And I would literally look at that quote and be like, "Uh, you know, if there's nothing else you can do right now, you can be the person that's prepared to hang on. And I would be like, um, you know, I can always learn more. I can figure out how to get better. I can ask for help. I can go and watch something inspiring on YouTube. These are things I proactively can do. And I think like there are so many times when you want to throw in the towel and it becomes so overwhelming and just, you feel so confused and stuck. Like I remember sitting on my computer at like 2 AM and my head felt like it was going to explode. Mm. <laughs> and I feel like we have all been through that experience multiple times and will continue to go through that experience. And I think for me, the, that what sets really successful people apart is their willingness to just hang on. And I think the best part about it is that, every single one of us has the ability to do that. Um, and so, yeah, that's what's really helped me keep, that's what's helped keep me going. Um, so that's why I would, that was, well, I did do that. So that's why I would still tell myself. <laughs> I love that quote. I think for me, I was always like when I left my corporate role, I mean, it was really like, a, I was kind of at the beginning phases. I do think that it is so overwhelming because you're learning so much at such a steep learning curve. So it can feel like, never ending or there's like, you're never going to get through it. You're never going to learn all this stuff and you're, you know, trying to take it all in. Um, So I will say that I feel like that comes in cycles and phases and, and I want to keep learning and growing. Of course, I think the challenges are a good part of the process. Um, But I never got into entrepreneurship to work less or to make my life easier necessarily in terms of what I was doing. I got into it because I wanted to, fulfill something that felt more purposeful, more aligned with my values. I felt like if I was going to be working this hard, I wanted to work on something that I felt really fired up about, that I felt really passionate about, that I felt like, yeah, if I'm going to be up at 2 a.m., like this is what I want to be doing at 2 a.m. for that like bigger vision that I have. And I know that in the beginning I was working a lot more than I do now. And I think that that also comes with seasons and with, yes, in the future, a team or just really deciding like what's most important and that learning curve will shift and change. And so it's not always going to be like that, but there's still days, like Carrie said, that like, it's my business. So like, I got to put it in sometimes, you know, Mm -hmm. and I got to put in what I know I want to get out of it. And so just keeping, I guess, my eye on the vision and being focused on like, what do I really want for my business, for my customers, for my team, for myself, for my family? Um, And is it worth it? And I think always asking yourself that question, because I would much rather work harder sometimes and and go through the challenges for the thing that I feel really passionate and aligned around versus doing that and for someone else or, or feeling kind of miserable and misaligned with what I was doing. So I felt like that was kind of my alternative. It was like, well, you're already working. Like I'm the type of person who's going to work hard either way. <laughs> so like, even if I'm working for someone else and I don't really like what I'm doing, like I'm, I just don't have it in me to not put my best in it. So I'm like, well, I'd rather work really hard over here for myself. So just keep going <laughs> if that's true for you. 
I love it. You just literally said exactly what I was going to say, that phrase, what is the alternative? And there's one particular night that just like comes to mind whenever I think about those moments when you want to literally throw your computer out the window. And it was my very first time setting up my WordPress website. And I'm (laughs) so in over my head. And you know, when you're like sobbing, sitting there trying to find the right template and they all suck, but you don't have money to like hire someone or even get a premium (laughs) template. And I remember just thinking, so what is, what is the alternative? Like, what is the other option? Oh, if I give up, it means I literally have to go back to a nine to five and I don't want to, like, that is not what I see for my life. Um, so that was something, that phrase, what is the alternative? So crazy that you said that. It's like, we're aligned, you crazy girl. Uh, it, it's, it's nuts because that was what got me through those challenges during that time. And today what really helps is I think about like the future and how big my vision is for the future. And then I think back and I look and I say, am I on the spectrum? Like, have I grown from three years ago? And if the answer is yes, we're moving in the right direction. As long as I see forward progress, I know okay, we're on the path, we're on the right, you know, on the right trajectory. Let's keep going. Mm, Love that, like future casting. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. Amazing, amazing answers. Thank you for sharing that. I think that was definitely from the heart. So were you listening? This episode was all about hanging on. Whether you are struggling with just getting started, whether you started but you're a year in and you're not growing as fast as you thought, whether you're five years in and feeling like the stuff that you used to know isn't necessarily as applicable anymore, it is okay. You're not alone. Multi-million dollar earners have similar struggles, or at least they can definitely relate to them from earlier on in their career. So I just want to make sure that you took a second and that you listened and you heard what they said. Number one was, remember how few people keep going in this industry. Can you be one of them? The second one is remember your purpose and don't be afraid to put in the time and energy that your business deserves because ultimately the boss is you. And number three was, what is the alternative? What else are you going to do? And if this still feels like it is your career and your destiny, then it's time to look at your progress and go, have I grown at all? Have I learned anything? And if you have, that is successful. It's always good to listen to other people and their reactions because you can readjust your current mindset. And I want to challenge you that if you're feeling like you're in that depressive comparisonitis spiral, maybe you heard this episode, but you're still feeling just that kind of dead inside discouragement, then it's time to change your behavior. It's time to start lessening the amount of information you're consuming, even if that's the show, unsubscribing from newsletters, not checking your social media as much and getting to work. When that happens to me, I focus on number one, my mindset and number two, my business. I cut everything else out because it sometimes it's too much of a stumbling block and I can't get into creativity because I'm too busy comparing. So if you haven't heard of Joe Dispenza, I highly recommend him putting some of those meditations on, getting your brain in a higher frequency so that you can move forward. And of course, there if you're feeling like, Michelle, I just have no clue even where to start with my visibility. I have tried a bunch of things over the past couple months and it all just sounds like white noise and I haven't seen results. Then if you do want to trust me with your visibility plan and helping you execute it, I would be honored. I think the best place for you would be the visibility lounge, which is my monthly membership. The doors are opening very, very soon. So if you want to get on that wait list and be the first to know, that's visibilityvixen.com forward slash visibility lounge. You can put in your email, get on the wait list, and you'll be the first to know when the doors open. This is my signature monthly membership where I will walk you through the four stages of visibility, which includes branding, putting together your own primary content channel, guesting on people's podcast summits, and ultimately getting to the stages, the big publications, hosting your first live event, releasing your first book, all of those huge goals and dreams. So again, that link is visibilityvixen.com forward slash visibility lounge. Would love to see your name pop up on the wait list. And in the meantime, let's dive into the next episode.